This is the first time I was out with the square setup, so I was getting used, used to the car, and I was chasing down this Porsche GT4 brand new for about four laps, and I finally caught him. I caught him really, really quickly in the first turn, and um, I think he got nervous because he slowed down a real lot uh, by looking in the rear mirror and seeing that big white tank coming behind him. But he wasn't really much slower than me at all because he was right behind me the rest of the session. Hi guys, how you doing? This is Charlie from Track Beast. So today we're gonna go over me uh, changing my car from the regular wheel setup, which is 285, 30, 20s in the front, and 305, 30, 20s in the rear. That's the stock setup on an SS1 LE. So I'm going to go 305, 30, 19s all the ways around. So I had to buy a set of rims, so I ended up buying a set of uh, Apex rims. And I bought Arc 8s, ET, 11s in the front with a three millimeter spacer, and ET 43s in the rear, uh, no spacer. So uh, it seemed to work really, really well. If you call Apex, ask for Corey, very, very knowledgeable. He helped me every step of the way. I told him what I wanted. He even recommended me using the uh, Falcons RT6660, which are 200 treadwear, but they are beastly. They're almost as sticky as my 100 treadwear Supercar 3Rs. That's how sticky they are. I ended up using them in a 305, 30, uh, 19 square. So this uh, square setup not only is pertains to my car, SS1 LE, but pertains to all cars. The square setup seems to be the, the best way of going about it. And it seems to be lowering the diameter of the tire um, works wonders for the car. So don't, people think, oh, the bigger the, bigger the, the wheel, the better you are. No. Yeah, that's why most race cars are 18, run 18 inch wheels. Mine's cars, um, Almost all of them all run 18 inch wheels. 20 inch I think is just for looks. So I went 19s because I didn't want to go for 18s even though you have more options with 18s uh, by, by going to slicks. But I don't want to run slicks because I have no room. I drive my car to the track and I'm not driving to the car on slicks. And I really have no room to put four, four tires in. So this pertains to Mustangs and it also pertains to Corvettes. So uh, I ran into a mu uh, Mustang that day, uh, it was a GT500, a 2020, who was flying, had a, had a work suspension, 720 horsepower, 680 pounds of torque, and he ran a 305 19 setup, and his car was a beast. Also, the guy Corey at Apex that helped me um, figure everything out for my car, also runs a, a Corvette Grand Sport, and he runs 315 square all around. Everyone seems to be doing it. I was an unbeliever, now I'm a believer. So this is what the car looks like now with the, the 19s all the way around, 19305s. And here's a picture of the front tire uh, curved out so you could see how much tire. I never believed that much tire could fit in that front wheel well but it fits, it barely fits, but it fits amazingly because I've been under there working on the car and it looks like nothing big is gonna fit. And there's like, you know, a 16th of an inch clearance, but it fits and I had zero rubbing on a very, very bumpy track. So if it, uh, Sebring. So if it didn't hit, it's never, then it's never gonna hit. So we're gonna do a side by side of me uh, with the square setup going against me with the uh, supercar three R's, which I did a 225 flat. So I was running 228s all day this day because I had a problem with my car and I was also getting used to it. Um, I have to get used to things. I, I ran the car for five years um, with uh, understeering and I learned to, to make the car go fast learning to, to go around its understeer. So then all of a sudden the car is neutral, so I just have to put it all together, which I'll get faster and faster with this as time, but just by seeing the sector speeds, uh, this car is going to be so much faster with the square setup. I'm doing four or five miles an hour faster through all of these sectors, 
which which is huge. So I just have to put it all together because I have to switch into uh, because it's a little uh, less diameter. It's about an inch less diameter in a rear. I have to switch gears a little more. Sometimes I have to go into fifth, and sometimes turns that I took in third, I have to take in fourth now. So then, then I, I just have to do a little better timing. But I'll get it. You know, it just takes me two, two, three to track days. And I'll have it nailed, and I'll get extract the most from the car. Now we're going to uh, do, watch the comparison. I'm going to do commentary during the, the lap comparisons and the sector time comparisons, and at the end I'm going to do a recap. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, we're at the start finish line. Basically, we all we did a couple of laps already, and uh, already um, at the start finish line, the square setup is at 122 miles per hour, and the uh, regular setup is at 116 miles per hour. And then at, at each different time we stop, just notice the speed differential, and also just take off a mile or two. Uh, per hour and you'll you'll get uh, the correct speed almost every sector the square setup is is faster by several miles per hour also the car felt much more nimble it almost made it feel like it was 500 pounds lighter um, just because the, even though it's only 20 pounds difference in, in tires but I guess with a less rotating mass of the tires it makes it accelerate faster it makes it brake better and it just makes the car feel more nimble because there's no more of that heavy uh understeer so all in all it just it's just a much better balanced car and you feel it through through the steering wheel So I was having problems uh, this day, the first time, time I ran with the square setup. I took it to an alignment shop that was supposed to be really good and deals with Porsches and BMWs. And he screwed up my, my rear toe um, tabs that hold in the rear toe. So instead of putting it inside the tabs, he put it on top of the tabs. So as I was going around the turns, it loosened up the tabs and my toe was wobbling in and out. So when I was going 140 down the straightaway, my, my rear end was floating back and forth. So I only did two sessions this day. So that's why my lap times weren't that great. So once I get to know the car better, I'm sure I'm going to do much better lap times. I think I'll equal the uh, G3Rs. So we're coming back onto the main straightaway right here. And uh, I always calculate what I'm doing under this bridge to determine how fast I was going. And at this point, I'm doing 105, which is probably 103 to 101. I also note at the start finish line, the di differential in speed. So now you saw the video. It's absolutely amazing uh, the, the speed I was getting um, through the turns and at different sectors of the track comparison to the G3Rs, which are much stickier tires. And I did a 225 with them. So if I could put this all together, I should theoretically be able to do 225s easily with 200 con uh, tread, tread wear as opposed to 100 tread wear. So when I put on 100 tread wears, it should be pretty interesting. Um, by the way, uh, that, that guy with the GT500, he, he was the only Mustang that ever passed me in 40 track days. Um, Non-race Mustang, of course race Mustangs passed me, but non-race Mustangs. He had a, um, a worked suspension set up by a race shop. So his car, once he got in, his car pointed straight, he pulled away from me like I was standing still. I'm gonna do actually a video on that. So he also got a GT350 that he does 225s with, with a square setup um, with the G, Supercar G3Rs. So in December, 
uh, I'm going to meet him at Sebring. Right now I'm in New York doing this video. Um, I don't usually run in Florida in the summer. It's just too hot. So I run, I run, I run up here uh, with my Corvette or my friends I rock. So in December we're going to meet and we're going to both run the 305 square setup. And he's a really good driver and very, very experienced. And I'm a pretty good driver and I'm very experienced. And we're going to go at it, uh, me and him, me my, my, with my SS1 LE and him with his GT350. And we're going to see who's faster. Should be very interesting. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, a lot's going to be coming up. And uh, please, if you like, press the like button. And um, please subscribe. Um, we're going to be giving a lot of... Uh, different information on uh, other, other things uh, like uh, reviewing the Falcon RT660s, other changes I'm doing to my car. So you guys have a great day and I will uh, talk to you soon. Have a good day.